Hello and welcome to another video. Um, I would like to talk about white allies today and why there is no such thing as a white ally. Um, I've, I've recently been on um, Ashley Akuna's show on YouTube, The Grapevine TV, and the title was um, Conversations with White Allies. And I do have a huge problem. Um, okay, before I even go into it, um, this is just a disclaimer. I am not trying to tone police or tell a black person how to label white people that speak up against racism, um, how to call white people. If you are black and you want to call black people ally, white people allies, do you boo? I am not, um, this is solely meant for white people and an explanation from one white person to another white person, um, especially to those white people that call themselves allies, because I want us to understand that there is no such thing as a white ally. Um, that being said, um, I often get asked, how do you call or why are there no white allies? Okay. So for us to understand why there are no white allies, we have to go back in history a little bit back to the year 1444. That was when the first slave ships took off with kidnapped Africans from the Western coast of Africa all the way to the, to the Americas. So, um, white people invaded an entire continent um, colonized literally the entire world, um, forced their languages, cultures, religions, um, their ways of life on people that already built empires, people that were already civilized, people that already had their identity, their cultures. They were like, they were not living on the trees like people like us to believe. Black people were civilized and were just the black people at the beginning of humanity. We all know that life came from Africa. We all know white people have only been here for 8,000 years. Meanwhile, even more than the black DNA dates back to around 300,000 years or even more than that. So how can we claim sup superiority <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> over people that were there before we even existed? I'm not only being there, but being civilized, building kingdoms, ruling their worlds, you know? Um, and then we often forget that in Spain, people were literally civilized by black people that came from Africa to Spain and ruled in, in Spain for 700 years, the Moors. So, um, like, I, I read this wonderful quote in the internet once. Unfortunately, I don't know who said it. So if you know, please drop a comment. Um, it said that the deeper you dig, the blacker humanity gets. And that's literally my favorite quote of all times because it's just so accurate like modern day scientists found out that the darkest or the first british person was a dark skinned black man with brown uh, blue eyes and he dates back to a ten ten thousand years ago so that's two thousand years longer than white people have even been in existence so that being said white people colonized africa invaded the country partially lightened the population um, forced everything on them and after they finished robbing off Africa or finished setting the basement for the continuous continuous exploitation that still takes place up to today gave them something they call independence so just to break this down you built a house okay um, I'm driving past the street and I see wow your house is beautiful I will stop my car I will come out of my car use weapons threaten your family um, I will invade your house and I said, this is now my house. You will be like, are you with your senses? But my weapons are powerful and I will get you in that point. I will invade you. Um, I will get everything over you. I'll rape your women. I will kill your daughters. I'll weaken your men and make that house my own. When the house is no longer um, luxur luxurious enough for me, um, I finished invading you. I finished stealing from you. I'm leaving that house and I'm giving you like a renting contract. Okay. You can be paying me, let's just say 2000 euro in a, in a year and you can live in my house in exchange for that. And that's literally independence. Okay. That's what white people did to African countries. When they sliced Africa like a cake in the 1884 Berlin conference, that's exactly the foundation they laid. Up to today, France collects over 500 billion euro every year from former French colonies. That's the only thing why France is thriving because France has nothing like no, no natural resources, nothing. A huge part of why France is such a strong economy is because of former African colonies. So knowing all these things, knowing what white people did in the past, you might be like, oh, but I never owned slaves. Well, guess what? Neither did I. 
neither was any living black person ever enslaved in physical shackles. But all white people reap the benefits of slavery, just like all black people wear its scars. Just like black people can give on um, discrimination or trauma from slavery and colonization over, con uh, over generations of generations, just like that, white people inherit racism over generations and generations. That's because racism is, an is not an opinion, it's a system. A system people like me created for people like me on the back of black people. Simple. Um, so that is also why there's nothing like reverse racism, but that's a topic, topic for another day. So when we look at the system white people built and our social stand in society, our, um, uh, our social construct as white people, we reap benefits solely when you have this skin color. Um, that does not mean that you cannot be poor. It doesn't mean that you cannot suffer in life. It doesn't mean that you might not make it hard or you have it hard. That doesn't mean that you might grow up in poverty. That doesn't mean that you might not struggle. White privilege means your skin color and identity were never a threat to your life, safety or career. Even in countries where we are predominantly black, where there are, in predominantly black uh, countries or societies, we still reap benefits even when we are absolutely a minority. So looking back at the system, we now know racism is a system. It's not an opinion. It's not something a good or a bad person has. Um, leading me to the next phrase that every white person is racist. Not because every white person runs around calling black people the N-word, runs around uh, discriminating black people, spitting on black people, being violent. No, they, every white person is racist because every white person benefits of of racism and oppression of black people how you might ask please google is free i mean come on this is common sense you can you can google white privilege and we all know that being white is a privilege um because society made it like this being white is is keeping you safe in situations whereby being black in that situations will be a death a death threat for you so we need to know that if we don't use our privilege for good um for example in Germany, we have a law that if you witness um, situations and you could prevent a crime from happening by stepping up, you can be legally convicted for not doing that. That's not based on racism. That's based on maybe violence or maybe stealing or maybe um, somebody was harassed and you, by calling the police, you would have prevented this from happening. You can be convicted for that, for not doing it. So it leads me to the question, why are white people not convicted for not ending racism? <laughs> I know, because racism. We all know the answer, but just a plot twist. So when we look at the society and when we know it's common sense, when you see something that's wrong, you do something. That's like even a child that literally knows no rules, knows no laws, knows when somebody's crying, something is wrong. When a person is, is in pain, something is wrong. Even a child has that empathy to be able to try and console somebody that's, that's obviously in pain. But unfortunately, we lose that empathy as we grow older and be um, society, raised in a society that gives us a ton of privileges and sees white as a standard. Meanwhile, white is literally the last ethnicity to have developed from black people. Whites have been here for like 8,000 years. Meanwhile, um, even modern day science proves that the first British person is a dark skinned um, man with blue eyes. And he was dated back to have lived around 10,000 years ago. So even modern day uh, African DNA can be traced back to around 300,000 years ago. The first ever human like um, bones to be found were found in today's Ethiopia dating back 3 million years ago. Like we are literally the last ethnicity to have developed from black people. The out of Africa theory is common sense. We all know life started in Africa. We all know life came from the black woman. If you don't know, the problem is you, not the system. The problem is you because the information is there. It's just that we are being denied that information. But we always do research. I mean, white people do research with every possible opportunity. So you don't know how your TV works, you do research. You don't know how to paint your fingernails, you do research. You don't know how to do your eyeliner, you do research. Why don't we do research about racism? Because we're so comfortable in our bubble, you know? So back to the topic as in why there are no allies. People like me created a system for 500 years that benefits me and only me and on the back of black people. And now I came to realize, or 
white people, some white people come to realize and then they actively do something against that system and then they expect to be pat on the shoulder like, oh, wow, you're such a good white person. That's racism in itself. How can you create a system, benefit from the system, then realize that the system is leaving people behind, people we came from behind, and then you expect to be called an ally? No. Mm -mm -mm. No. It doesn't work like that. None of you people calling themselves allies would go to a judge, uh, a policeman, a doctor, a teacher, even a cleaner. You expect people to do their damn jobs. You know a cleaner is supposed to clean uh, the public school. You know your teacher, the, your children are supposed to, supposed to be taught by their teachers. You know a policeman is supposed to convict um, a criminal. You know a judge is supposed to make sure that everybody gets their rightful um, conviction whenever they do something wrong. You know a doctor is supposed to save lives. None of you in your right minds would ever go to these people and be like, wow, thank you for being a doctor. Or wow, thank you for convicting that criminal. Or wow, thank you for um, putting a pedophile behind uh, closed doors, behind bars, you know. We know it's common sense. We know it's common sense for people to do their damn job. We need to get to a point where we know that white people's damn job is to end the system we created. We are not in this position because we deserve to be here. We are not in this position because we worked so hard to be here. We are in this position because we killed, we raped, we oppressed, we enslaved, we colonized. We exploited and we still do that up till today. Why we are where we are is because... If it could be visually made, blood would be dripping from our hands like water from a waterfall. That is the plain fact. And we don't want to realize it because we are kept in our bubble. We are kept in our, oh, um, you are not racist because you are not lip syncing the N-word. And oh, this person is bad because he, 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 he once said the N-word and... Um, racists are bad people and other white people are not racist. No. Mm -mm. all white people are racist actively the ones that be like oh all lives matter uh oh uh, the kkk is a christian organization oh the afd is a german racist party is not uh, is freedom of speech those are the active racist people then they are passively racist people which i hope i could calm myself into because i'm definitely not going around <laughs> insulting black people i am definitely not believing that black people are of any less definitely vice versa so um but we are still racist because we benefit from racism we benefit from oppression we benefit from exploitation we benefit and we reap um benefits from slavery and colonization um so at the end of the day every white person is racist so no white person deserves any praises for trying to end a system that falsely gives us benefits we don't deserve. No white person deserves to speak out against what's obviously wrong. Nobody in their right mind, even if you all go back to school, if we all go back to our younger days, if you see, okay, person A hit person B and you person C witnessed it and later the teacher found out you witnessed it without telling the teacher that person A did that to the person B your ass is on fire you are going to be convicted too you are going to be punished too because you covered a crime so we as white people have been covering our own crimes and we are supposed to be convicted for that we are supposed to be convicted for allowing racism for enabling racism for accepting oppression for accepting exploitation we are supposed to be convicted for committing the biggest crimes in human history. But we are here and we have the audacity to discuss if we are able to lip sync the N word or not. No, absolutely not. And I'm trying this in the nicest way possible. No, no white person has the right to call themselves a damn ally. You are not. You are being a decent human being. This runs out my damn blood pressure. I don't just know. How can somebody come up with the idea, you wake up one morning and you're like, I'm an ally because I speak against a system people like me created and people that me are kept safe and um, let me just type BLM and then I'm an ally. Oh God, no, definitely not. Absolutely not. Then whenever I say this, white people are like, oh, but then, how do you want us to call white people that speak against racism? 
And I'm like, are you damn serious? How about you call them decent human beings because they speak what's obviously wrong? They say what's obviously wrong. We expect this common sense in every layer of our societies, in every aspect of our societies, in schools, in politics. Um, when you go to the doctor, when you go to the supermarket, we expect people to step up for what's wrong. Why the difference with racism? Why do we give white people a damn pass for being racist, passively or actively? And then why do we even crown white people for speaking out something that we should have done 500 years ago? If we weren't cowards, then black people wouldn't be where they are today. But we are not ready for that conversation. But I equally don't care, though. I equally don't care. Because the truth has been said, has to be said. 500 years, people have been crying out. Black people have been crying out. What you people are doing is wrong. Leave our countries. Leave our skin. Leave our hair. Let us wear our skin. Let us wear our hair. Let us be dark skin. Let us be light skin. Let us be blonde. Leave us the hell alone. And white people are there like, but I'm not racist because I never owned slaves. Pardon? I beg your pardon. It's not like that. That can never work. The bar for white people to be common sense, to be decent hum human beings is so damn low that I just cannot. The expectations the society has upon white people when it comes to anything um, justice, which I don't absolutely believe in. There is no justice for what we have done and what we are still doing. Equally, there is no peace. There is no peace and there is no justice because you cannot give justice for 576 years of ongoing exploitation, colonization, slave, slavery. Um, it's not possible. It's not possible. We cannot talk about justice anymore. There is no justice. Um, there is only making the future a better place. We cannot ever undo or correct or even apologize for what has been done because this is beyond human imagination what we have done is beyond beyond my comprehension so um no single white person if you are white and you're watching this and you use the name ally for yourself delete it stop it you are not an ally you are being a decent human being you are the bar for you is so damn low do better do better you are not an ally i am not an ally no white person is an ally Therefore, actually, this became longer than I expected it to be, but it, it is what it is. This is not something I can put in five minutes because it's, it's, it's so deep. It's so deep. Black people have gotten so damn used to white people, white people being deeply racist that anytime somebody is less obviously racist, maybe like me or like another white person that speaks out against the system, we are getting praises and this is wrong. Black people, I'm sorry. This is not meant for you. I'm not saying... Um, I'm not criticizing the fact that uh, you praise your white friends or even I've, I've gotten a ton of messages. I get a ton of comments of black people thanking me. And I please don't get me wrong. I appreciate the love. I see you all. I, this is not a matter of lack of appreciation. This is a lack of, uh, of, of, um, of common sense because it shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't feel the need to thank me or any other white person for doing the only thing that's right after 500 years of white silence. Absolutely not. Still, I appreciate you. I appreciate when you take your time to write me, when you take your time to comment, when you take your time. It encourages me, of course. And it, I know that it means something to you because you've gotten so used to seeing um, or people like me being so blatantly um, unapolog unapologetically racist that I understand that it's somehow refreshing when you see someone as speaking what you have been saying for the last 500 years, but it shouldn't be like this. And the fact that it's like this doesn't speak for us as white people, as humans, as empathic people. It doesn't speak for our character. It doesn't speak for us as a society. It doesn't speak for us as human beings in no damn way. It in opposite of that, it only proves my point. It only proves my point that we are all racist. And if you actively want to do something, go out and do it. Educate your neighbors, your teachers, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your bosses, the people around you, the white people around you. Don't look at black people and be like, what can I do? Educate one another. Each one, teach one. Go out there and do the work with white people. Black people don't need your voices. They don't need our voices. They have been saying this thing for the last 500 years. They're tired. Leave black people the hell alone. They're tired. They are tired of telling us over and over and over again, like, like a fucking parrot that is sitting somewhere and repeating and repeating and repeating and it's falling on deaf ears.
black people are tired. Their only responsibility is healing. The work is upon us. This is our responsibility. It is our problem to solve. I keep on saying it. Racism is a white invention. It's a white problem. And it's our thing to solve it. Stop going for black people to ask them what you can do. Uh, how you can help. Um, stop it. Leave black people alone. Do your research. So many black people have written, have spoken, have recorded themselves. Watch it. Educate yourself and then go out there and carry the black people's word to our white societies. And that's the only solution. It's really simple, actually. So we just need a needle to bust the bubble we are into. <laughs>